Amen. Now, we have been taking a look. If you have your book, and everybody doesn't have one, I know. Uh, we have been looking at the eternally, on page 260, the eternally saved multitude of people from every nation. And I believe we got down to like G and H, which is followers of the Lamb. I think we finished Beast Rejectors. Maybe we didn't. But if you take a look at the book of Revelation, chapter 13, in verse 7. We're looking at the multitudes of people uh, eternally saved from every nation. And in verse, in chapter 13, verse 7. Would you, would someone read that for us, please? Okay, thank you, Sister Mary. Now, we, we, we just read a portion of scripture. Do you know who the, the hymn is? Antichrist. The Antichrist. The Antichrist. We're going to talk about the Antichrist a little bit more uh, as we uh, progress through the lesson. But what, it, what does it say about the Antichrist that's going to happen here? To make war with the saints. And what else? And to overcome them. To overcome them. And it says, and what else does it say about him? Amen. So he's going to have power over the whole world. Yeah. Antichrist. But look what it says about the saints. It says... And it was given to him to make war with the saints. And not only to make war, but to overcome them. That means, what does that mean? The lot of saints are going to be what? Well, it says saints. See, so these are true saints. So. They won't be turning to the Antichrist, but something else is going to happen to them. And is what Sheila said. Say it louder. They're going to be they're going to be killed. Saints will be killed. Saints will die. And they will be overcome. So that's what's going to happen in the tribulation period, because what we're seeing, uh, what we've seen is that there are going to be some who will be saved during the tribulation. They weren't saints before the tribulation started, but they got saved during the tribulation. And as a result, the Antichrist is going to have them killed. Um, let's take a look. Oh, I don't have my clicker. Let me see. Take a look at the, the book of Daniel, chapter 7. And verse 21. Matter of fact, beginning in verse 19. Would someone read for us beginning of ni verse 19 through 21?
Yes, through 21. Amen. Thank you. You see, and we'll find out later who these ten horns belong to. Um, but what we see here is that Daniel is confirming what's going to happen in the book of Revelation. Uh, and what we see is that war was made against the saints and prevailed against them. Also, take a look at uh, let's go back to Revelation chapter seven, uh, chapter 11. Verse 7. And if someone has verse 7, please read it. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The spirit is called Sodom, and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Amen. Now, that was referring to uh, the two witnesses that will be uh, on the earth during the tribulation period. But again, it says that um, they, they will make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Um, so, again, these are these are some who will be saved um, during the tribulation period. Uh, the next group is the followers of the Lamb. Turn with me to uh, Revelation 14. And verse verses four matter of fact, I think it would be better if we start at verse one of uh, verses one through five. Would someone read that so you can get a full understanding of what it's talking about? Cyan? Yes, through verses five. Okay. Now, thank you very much. Now, again, we're talking about those who are saved during the tribulation period. And so what we see here is that these, again, is referring to the 144,000. We've seen them in, in earlier verses in uh, chapter 7, and uh, now we see them again in uh, chapter 14. So what do we know about them? Well, 14.4 says that these 144,000 are virgins for they are they which were def not defiled with women. They had no physical uh, relationships with women. So they were virgin men who, who are. Do we know if they're Jews or not? The Bible does say that they're Jews and they were 12,000 taken from each 
strategy. That's correct. That's correct. And notice one other thing that, that I notice here. It says in verse one. Um, and having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, I'm, I'm not sure whether that means uh, the Lord God or it means that it's the um, their Jewish names written. I, I haven't done that kind of research to try to find out, but it says they have their names written, but they were Jewish. We know that they were Jews because they were of the 12,000 each uh, from the 12 tribes. Right. Um, let's see. And we know that um, they will win over other Jews and Gentiles to Christ. Uh, and from uh, verse uh, chapter seven, verses one through eight, we know that at the beginning of the tribulation, uh, the spirit would do a supernatural work and seal 12,000 Jewish men from each tribe. That's what we were just talking about. And these are the first fruits of the tribulation harvest of saints. That is the first fruits guarantee that uh, the remaining Jewish harvest will follow. In other words, they were the first saved from the among the Jews. They were sealed and they will go out and share the gospel. The Holy Spirit will bring others to Christ. So that's why it says they were the first fruits. Any questions or comments? OK, let's take a look at you have a. Right. And could you speak up just right. a little bit? I'll, I'll it. it says mm -hmm. um, Revelation 6, 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar mm -hmm. the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Right. And for the testimony which they held. Right. Um, my question is the saints that are being martyred during the great tribulation mm -hmm. these are they under the altar and also my question is John is showing what John is showing what happened in other words we see these souls before we're told that they were slain is right. That, that you're, you're seeing. Well, I, I believe that they are already slain. If, if they, for instance, let's take a look at it. It says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. All right. But we so, read that. We read in um, I just read it about said how they had overcome beast had overcome right. the saints. Right. Overcoming me they were martyred. Exactly. Martyred. Exactly. So my question is do those souls is John saying that those souls also are placed under the altar with the ones um, you know because I, they're asking Jesus to avenge their death. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm, I'm looking at the chronological order of the chapters and the events that are taking place, and I'm trying to make some kind of connection. Is, you, you understand what I'm saying? I think I do. And sometimes I think it's difficult to do that because he's telling a picture. And sometimes I think, although it's going in chronological order, I think he may be giving a picture of that's not necessarily following chronological order. And let me try to give you an example. Um, t take a look at chapter 7. And, and beginning at verse 9. It says, After this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, um, stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb. 
And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying to me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And he said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation okay? and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he sitteth on the throne and shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, as I read that, um, to me, they could be the same saints. OK, it's just that you see in one place. Uh, that they are under the altar, and in another place, they're before the altar. So um, the, the thing that I would say that is that they are, they are those who were slain during the tribulation period. And uh, what's going to happen is that they will, um, their souls, because that's what it says, you saw their souls, they haven't been resurrected yet, but their souls are there. And uh, at the end of the, uh, I do believe at the end of the, uh, of the tribulation, they will be resurrected. And why do I say that? Turn with me to Revelation chapter 20. And verse... And, and read that, Sheila. Read it loudly. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and for which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ. For a thousand years. Amen. So you see, that's where I believe those same souls that you saw that were killed during the tribulation period, uh, that they will be resurrected at the end of the tribulation period or when Christ comes, comes back. OK, so. Uh, any other question? Confusion. OK, so what we're looking at is these who were. Eternally saved multitudes of people from every nation. And we want to take a look at the commandment keepers in uh, Revelation chapter 14, verses 12 and 13. Um, Revelation 14, 12 and 13. Let's see. Would someone read that for us, please? Here is the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessings, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit. Okay, thank you. Now, have you heard some of those scriptures before? Where do we where do we hear them? At, at funerals, we hear them a lot at funerals, right? And <clears throat> and the author calls these commandment keepers.
Why do you say, it says they keep the commandment. Why do you say they're blessed? Okay. Labored in the Lord until their death. Okay. Why, why else are they blessed? Huh? Because they're serving the Lord? Okay, they're serving the Lord. Good. Why else are they blessed? Would the scriptures say why they're blessed? They died in the Lord. Okay. Take a look with me at Revelation chapter 1, verse 13. And if someone has it, would you read Revelation 1 3? Uh, chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Now, why does he say they are blessed? Why do, in in one three? Why does he say they are blessed? They read. They read the word. They hear the word, and they keep the word. Those things which were written. Okay. So they serve, but they are also keeping the word. What God says. And you look at our nation today. I don't say we're keeping the word. They don't want to hear it either. Or read it. That's right. They don't want to hear it, read it, or keep it. But the Lord says you're blessed if you do. Okay. Now, take a look at um, chapter 20, verse 6. And someone read that for us, please. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Sister Mary. So we see these are also blessed. And what happens to them? Hmm? They have part in the first resurrection, right? They're going to be resurrected. They're going to be saved. Those who, those who come through the tribulation period will be saved. I mean, pastor has been talking about, um, you know, what, what really matters. You know, whether your wealth matters or whether eternal life matters. Right? Wealth, he says, uh, the Lord says, the thieves come through and steal. And it's going to pass away. Amen. But what about eternal life? It's forever. And it's multiplied. Um, so, he says, blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So uh, the second death. So that means they were born twice. And they died once. If you're born once. You die twice. Don't know if you get the analogy, but. Um. There is, that's why we say you need to be born again. You must be born again. Amen. 
Okay, here's something else about the commandment keepers. Take a look at uh, chapter 14 in verse 12. These are those who keep the word. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. 14, 12. Um, could you read that? Someone? Okay. Okay, that's the scripture that we just had. Okay. Okay, I think I went the wrong way. Okay. Uh, turn with me to chapter 22. Revelation 22. I'm still blocking. Okay. And if you have chapter 7, I mean uh, verse 7, read what that says. Okay. Talking about commandment keepers. That's how the author phrases it. And he, again, we see why he says, the Lord says, blesses he who keeps the saying of the prophecy of this book. There are some who don't want to even read the book. But he's saying you're blessed if you read it. And you're blessed if you keep the sayings of the prophecy of the book. And in verse 14, he says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the what? And what else? What a, is that a blessing or what? Okay. Um. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Amen. That's a blessing. Now, one of the other points that the author points out, we, we go to a new section here and he says, this uh, this period is to prepare the world for the millennial reign of Jesus Christ and is referring to Revelation chapter 19 verses one to six. Let's let's read that um, because I didn't particularly uh, get his point other than Christ is preparing. This is where we see Christ preparing to come back. But also it's a place where uh, he's receiving the Lord is receiving high praise. So let's take a look at uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. Excuse me, Revelation uh, chapter 19, beginning at verse 1 through 6. Could someone read that for us, please? Uh, hold on just, just one moment, Sir Terry. Thank you. Does that sound familiar? You've heard that, right? I mean, sometimes they even sing it up here. Yes, yes, yes. Amen? Amen. I don't want to begin to sing it. I would love to sing it. You don't want to hear me sing it. But, uh, hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto the Lord our God. We hear it. Amen. And we rejoice in it. Okay, Sister Eric, excuse me, go right ahead, please.
Amen. Amen. And we see that here, uh, you know, we'll have a chance, I do believe, um, to go back and look at why they are giving such praise um, for the defeat of the enemy uh, that is taking place in previous chapters. But we see that. um Excuse me. I said it says right here that um, the reason for for the Lord is true and righteous mm -hmm. are His judgments. Mm -hmm. um, I was reading how when the angels were pouring out the judgments, they were praising God. Amen. They were praising Amen. God because you know all this time, even like the souls who were under the altar, everybody in heaven is waiting for Jesus. To judge. Amen. Because this reveals his righteousness. This reveals his 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 worth. He's true. He's holy. He's right. pure. Right. Um they just they they are waiting. And he's also merciful, merciful. and gracious, yeah, slow true. to anger, yeah, giving them a chance to repent. That's true. And they refuse. And they refuse. They refuse. And so you're right, uh, Sheila. They are waiting because he's a holy God. He has to judge the sin, and he will judge the sin. Um, but when you think about God's wrath, I mean, I, I could see, you know, as bad, you know, they were, uh, you, we, you, you just read where the saints were saying, how long, Lord, before you judge? Okay. And, and yet. He had more that he had to say. He was holding back his wrath because his exactly. answer to them was basically, I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. all that he wants to say or all that will be saved have not been saved That's yet. true. That's so true. So he's holding back his wrath mm -hmm. yet until all that's, the that's so true. has given him yeah. are saved. Uh, and that, that has, has precedence over their prayer for him to judge. Right. You remember he says, vengeance is mine? Yes, yes. What does it say? I will repay, says the Lord. Okay. So he's going to repay. But think about his wrath. I mean, God's wrath, to me, is just awesome. I mean, it's, it's eternal. There's never any relief. Uh, you, you're in a lake of fire, you know. I mean, um, I, the only way I, I, I equate that, that I, I know that physically I can equate it, I look at the sun. I look at the sun. You know, you see pictures of these explosions and things and, and how hot the sun is and all of that. I mean, we can't even get near the sun because we evaporate, vaporize. But yet, I, I don't know what hell is like. But when I see that, that tells me it's 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 just awesome. It's exactly. And yet we're talking about the devil and the demons and all those who refuse God, reject God, will be thrown into the lake of fire. Forever. And so that is awesome. Wrath. Also look and see where the scriptures talk about when he shall appear, even the mountains run away. The heavens run away. Can you imagine that? I mean, that's what it says. Take a look. Revelation chapter 20. And um, let's see, where is it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Verse 11. Read that. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it and whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them. 
Can you, I mean, I, I have a hard time even conceiving, understanding that. But I believe it. Because it's talking about God's wrath. And they're going to, when, when judgment times comes, and they're all standing there. And then all of a sudden they're standing on nothing. But God is supporting them before a throne. There's no foundation. The earth and the heavens are fled away. And the thing is, they're not being judged. <laughs> they're not the earth and the heavens. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, the yes. The earth and the heavens right. are not being judged. Right. Right. But because of this awesomeness, this dread, you know, they, they go. That's, that's, that's exactly what I see uh, when we talk about the wrath of God, um, which is why. You know, when you, although Jesus didn't have to come and die for us, yet he did. You know, and it just shows to me just great love and compassion to uh, to save souls that they don't go there. But man's heart he's what he said about man's heart. Deceitful and desperately wicked. And who can know it? So. You you go to try to share the gospel with somebody. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They got their own agenda. They're enjoying their sin and their pleasure, which is but for a moment. And they're sacrificing eternity. But yet God is merciful. As you said, he's, he's giving people an opportunity to get saved. So it's an awesome thing. It's an awesome thing. Um, we want to take a look now at the participants of the tribulation. Uh, that's what he calls this, this section, the participants of the tribulation period. And he has it entitled the Antichrist. What have you heard about the Antichrist? What do you know about the Antichrist? You've read about the Antichrist. You've heard about the Antichrist. You know he's coming. What do you know about the Antichrist? He's against Christ. That's that's great. Let's take a. He has what? Out of uh, out of the blue. Well, how about out of the sea? What do you mean by out of the blue? Oh, okay, I got you. I understand you now. I got you. I missed it. Missed that point. Uh, let's take a look at um, Revelation chapter 1. Oh, excuse me, chapter 13. And would you, uh, yeah, I'm going to ask you to read for me. Would you, uh, Charles, read beginning at uh, the first, let's see, the first two verses. Mm -hmm. Then I stood in the span of the city, and I saw the beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns. Mm-hmm. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like a field of bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and his interval. Amen. Amen. Have you seen words similar to these before? In Daniel. Amen. So you can see how the scriptures complement one another. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see here. The the first uh, act that the author talks about are attribute or name. Excuse me. The first name that he has for him uh, or attribute. He talks about his wonder. Um, there has been a tremendous awe attached to this mysterious individual of the future. 
What one believes about him should be based on scripture, the author reminds us. So the first name that we have, and, and someone just said this, the wonder of his names is Antichrist. And the prefix anti, what does that mean? Against Christ. Okay. Anti means against, right? And But it also says, um, this is certainly, uh, this would be certainly true that he's against Christ. But the prefix also means in place of or instead of. And he will come in place of Christ. Or serve as a counterfeit or false messiah. Now, the scripture talks about that, too. Right. Have we not seen that? He will come promising peace halfway through the tribulation. His true character will be revealed. The word antichrist is found only in the epistles of John, the author of the book of Revelation. So let's turn and we'll take a few uh, take a look at some of the scriptures. Um, can you see? First um, John, chapter two, verse eight. Oh, excuse me. Two verse 18. Thank you. And when someone read that for us, please. Matter of fact, what we want to do is read from verse 18 through 26. Amen. And um, could you also turn with me to First uh, John chapter four, verse three? Matter of fact, uh, I want to start at verse two. Someone read that for us. Okay, now as we thank you, Michael, as we look at those two two verses of scripture and, and the ones previously read uh, by Larry, what do we notice about the Antichrist? What what is it that we know that they are called Antichrist? They don't confess Jesus, right? And uh, in in this last verse, we see that they don't confess the father either. Right. Did we see that or was it the other scripture? OK, 
So if they don't confess the Father, um, oftentimes you'll hear them confess the Father, but not the Son. Uh, but here it says if they don't confess the Father or the Son, um, they are antichrist. And if they don't confess the Son, they are antichrist. Um, and then you got some who don't confess the Father either. Uh, Second John. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. In my Bible, it says, who is a liar, but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist that denies the father, and then there's a conjunction, mm-hmm. and the son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, a lot of people talk about God, God, God. Right. But when you, the Bible says the father and, and the son. Exactly, exactly. Well, that's so true. Because, um, oh, we're over our time. Um, the scripture also talks about, uh, you remember when in John chapter 5, um, Christ came and said that uh, he told him that he was the, he, um, let me just find it before I misquote it. John chapter 5 and verse 17. Um, he said that, but, but Jesus answered him, my father worketh here too, and I work. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but that he also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. OK, and uh, which he was equal with God. He's God's son. And then uh, answered Jesus and said unto them, verse 19, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that he doeth. And he will show him greater works than these. And then it goes down and says, For the Father judges no man, in verse 22. Matter of fact, I skipped over 21. I shouldn't do that either. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickens them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. For the father judges no man, but hath commended all judgment unto the son. Um, that men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father which hath sent him. And so John is even there. He's given us a description of what one is the antichrist. Although he doesn't specifically call him Antichrist, but it's the same thing, similar to what he's saying in the other verses. So what are we saying? Jesus is God, is equal with God. Um, equal with the Father. And so if you deny the Son, you deny the Father. Right? Um, it's time for us to go. Before I do, uh, we're going to close up. Are there any veterans here today, this morning? Do we have any veterans? Brother Bill, uh, we just want to let you know we appreciate your service. Amen. That you, okay? So this week is Veterans Week, and we certainly uh, appreciate the service you gave to the country. Amen. Amen. Let, us, uh, let us pray. Father, we are indeed grateful to you for your word. Uh, We pray that you would help us to walk in your way, to keep your word, to read your word, and to be doers of your word, uh, to share your word with those who would hear. And uh, Father, we um, just thank you for your great love, the things that we've read uh, this morning about your love and your mercy and your grace. and your desire that all souls be saved. We pray, dear Lord, that you would help us as we go about our week to share your word as we have opportunity. And uh, we thank you for each one for coming. We pray your continued blessings on us. We pray that you would uh, continue to be with us as we continue in worship. We ask it uh, that you be uh, truly that you be glorified in our worship this morning. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen.